Oh, this is going to be good. Oh, this is going to be absolutely amazing. The Woman King, a movie about the West African nation of Dahomey, one of the most brutal, vicious, violent, and inhumane nations in the history of humanity. <laughs> Being portrayed, of course, through the modern-day progressive lens of such actor luminaries as John Boyega. And Viola Davis here, who is an American actress who will be portraying the people that more than likely beat, kidnapped, and sold her ancestors. <laughs> that is just too good. Then again, considering she is now a big-name multi-millionaire actor, I'm just saying maybe some thank yous. <laughs> in order. I should not be making jokes like this. Not on YouTube right now, but Jesus. <laughs> this is absolutely amazing, and it just gets better as well. An ambitious recruit who together fought enemies who violated their honor, enslaved their people, and threatened to destroy everything they lived for. This is in reference to the Dahomey Amazons, by the way, who which everything they lived for was Violence, murder, human sacrifice, and the enslavement of other Africans. Oh no! Oh god! We must protect our way of life! <laughs> I am going to love this movie. Please, oh please, oh please, let it be released soon. <laughs> and the best part too is because it gets better. Oh Jesus, does it get better too. John Boyega here, most uh, famous for his absolutely atrocious role as Finn in those movie things we don't really talk about, will be playing King Gezo. Now, I don't blame you if that doesn't ring any bells, but let me put it like this. Dahomey was a nation... <laughs> I found some beautiful things here, like uh, 10 African nations involved in the slave trade. Number one, Dahomey. Dahomey was the slave trade in Western Africa. <laughs> Involved. I found a beautiful Wikipedia article too that went something like, oh yes, the rise of the Atlantic slave trade coincided with Dahomey. <laughs> king Gezo rose to power by taking the throne of king from his brother in a coup organized and helped by a Brazilian slave trader. <laughs> entire thing. He's just so steeped in slavery. I'm just imagining John Boyega standing there, all like uh, Lion Kingy on a on a hill, looking out on the African plains, sun in the background, as he's like, we've done it. We've defended our way of life. We've defeated the evil people who wanted to enslave us. As a slave walks up with his royal umbrella to hold it over his head. That was a thing in Dahomey, by the way, the whole royal umbrella thing. <laughs> and the Dahomey Amazons themselves. Oh, oh, oh my Jesus. Okay, here's the thing. They keep destroying the... De de destroying? Describing the Dahomey... Uh, uh, English? Jesus. The Dahomey Amazons as a part of the Dahomey army. And they were. But more importantly, they were the bully boys, the, the Gestapo, essentially, of Dahomey. Because you might think, hmm, a woman police corps, that doesn't sound very effective. Surely the criminals could beat them up or run or, you know, do any of the many other things that men have a bit of an advantage in. Except, here's the thing. The Dahomey Amazons were also all the wives of the king. And can you guess what the penalty was for laying your hands on the king's wives? <laughs> Death, of course. And so they turned out to be a remarkably effective police force, because if you so much as touched them, <laughs> you were dead. Oh, I just, I love the entirety of Dahomey. See, here's the thing too. We do need more movies about actual Africa, because Africa has a lot of actually genuinely cool history. The Zulus, oh. I will do a historical video on the Zulus at some point, particularly the Zulu warrior as well. Shaka Zulu revolutionized warfare in Africa. He was the Julius Caesar of Africa. He came a few hundred, if not thousand years too late to really have the same kind of effect, sure. But for the time and the area, he was a revolutionary military genius. And his story absolutely should be told. There are many cool other histories from Africa as well, but goddammit, oh, me. 
<laughs> You've probably all heard about the Aztecs, right? Humans sacrifice how they were constantly at war to gather people so they could stab them in the chest and rip out their hearts and stuff. The Dahomeys had that as well in spades. They built their entire economy practically on the slave trade until the white people showed up and went, right, so, um... We know we've been dealing with you for quite a while here, but we don't like slavery anymore for moral reasons, so could you stop? And I believe that it was actually King Gezo who was, uh, fine, okay, we'll stop. Then he stopped for about a year or two, and then he started slaving again, and contacting various nations like, I think, Portugal and Brazil to try and resume the slave trade. In fact, they were so insistent that they needed the slave trade that it took a Royal Navy blockade of their coastline to finally make them stop. <laughs> oh, this is going to be absolutely glorious now. To be fair, I'm sure none of that will actually make it into the movie. Again, uh, it's a story that follows Naniska, Viola Davis, general of the all-female military unit. Again, uh, semantical problems there, but... And Nawi, Tusa Madu, an ambitious recruit. Recruit, there you go. Who fought together against enemies who violated their honor, enslaved their people, and threatened to destroy everything they lived for. This is going to be the most, if you will excuse the pun, whitewashed, Hollywoodized take on Dahomey you have ever seen. And it is going to be beautiful every step of the way. Because if you actually know the horrible history of Dahomey, oh god. It's going to be great. Believe you me, it will be fantastic. I highly recommend you read up on Dahomey, by the way. It has a rather fascinating history. They uh, they did very well in many African wars until they eventually got uh, puppeted by... Uh, oh. Oh? Oh, there was something about... Oh, anyways, a much larger, another very interesting African kingdom, by the way. Uh, built their fortresses out of brambles and barbed wines in a kind of early version of barbed wire. Pretty awesome, really. But they didn't do so well against the uh, the French either, who decided to, you know, slice a little bit of territory here and there. They tried their traditional ways of fighting against the French by, uh, you know, talking to witch doctors who were totally like, yeah, no, I can make you immune to bullets, and... Well, you can imagine how well that went, of course. Hey, to be fair, we kind of did the same thing for quite a while up here in uh, the northern areas of Europe as well. The Britons in particular were quite famous for their paint that would totally make them immune to Roman gladiuses. Weirdly enough, that didn't really work out either, but oh well. Minor insignificant details, eh? I'm just... John Boyega, oh god. He has been looking for an important role, something for him to, you know, sink his artistic teeth into, or rather firing up his virtue signals ever since star wars threw him so far under the bus you couldn't even see him anymore with the whole china thing because the chinese people weren't fond of there being a black man in star wars as it turns out so yeeted to the back of the poster he goes and to be fair to finn was an awful goddamn character, despite all of the promise, like the idea of the point of view of a stormtrooper after the fall of the, the Emperor in the First Order, having been indoctrinated for his entire life in their ideology. That's cool. You can do a lot with that. Is he going to, uh, like, how, how would he... How would he turn? Like, how would he argue about things? How would he view the rebellion? Because obviously somebody who has been accustomed to the extraordinarily, I assume, strict uh, way of living of the First Order, of training to be a soldier, etc., reigned and raised and brainwashed, would have a very different outlook on life than the Rebel Alliance. How would he even get along with other rebels? Wouldn't he view a lot of their more, you know, sloppy, rebellious natures? kind of disgusting? Like, in a rebel base where everything works with duct tape and spit, wouldn't he be the first one to kind of hold his nose against all those, like, oh, you use that for a briefing table? How dare you? Instead, he's none of those things. He's not a stormtrooper in the slightest, in fact. He cosplays as one for about five seconds, then sees one of his presumed friends die in front of him, killed by a rebel, incidentally. And this somehow makes him go, Oh yes, the rebellion! Those are the good guys, I should defect to them immediately! They killed my friend, after all. 
or maybe it was a childhood bully, who the hell knows? But the moment he gets the opportunity, he joins up with the rebel and starts gleefully slaughtering his comrades. <laughs> That's a character arc that makes Ray look good. Such a goddamn waste. But anywho, I am sure he will do absolutely smashing as the King of Dahomey, speaking to the Brazilian merchant going, Right, so you're gonna have to take over from your brother because he's not selling me enough for your people. <laughs> God, I cannot wait for this. I genuinely cannot. <laughs> anywho... Until next time, I've been Arch, thank you all very much for watching, look forward to this movie, and even though YouTube tends to strike everything I do uh, review related, I'm, I'm making something around this. Oh, there is just no goddamn question about it. Hey, it might even be actually historical. Now, there would be an interesting one. A a kind of a reckoning with the, the considerably darker history of Africa in the actual spirit of historical truth. There, that could be really something, but who am I kidding? It's the same kind of thought like, oh yes, live action Cowboy Bebop could totally be awesome. In a parallel universe, at least. And, of course, as always, if you like the video, please do consider leaving a like and a comment in the section below, as I try to remind myself to talk about that every time. Have a good day.